Greetings and gather around all ye little spirits and I will tell you a tale, a tale of the lost records of Ragnarok. The battle for humanity against the gods, their creators. These fights lost to myth may have never happened, but the stories were passed down to me. And so I'll pass them down to you. Let us begin. We'll now move on to the next round of the tournament. The next representative for humanity is about to emerge. On humanity's side of the arena, an ominous air flowed out of the opening and up into the stands. The crowd was whispering who it could be until abruptly they all went silent. Unknown during his age, he died in poverty as a nobody. Only in death were his works later discovered and adapted and grew. His legacy led to the creation of a truly epic mythos and frighteningly disturbing universe. Ooh, who is that man? Even the gods are scared of him. I don't think he was even on the list. Is he even human or is it a monster? A tall, well-dressed figure walked out into the arena wearing a black and yellow striped suit with a long coat draped around his shoulders. Under one arm, he held a book. Abstract horror emanated from the simplicity of the spine and the cover. The man clicked his pen in annoyance in response to the crowd gathered around him. His life held for him nothing but misfortune, but he channeled it all into his mighty pen to give magic to his stories. He died with that pen in hand and with an undying hatred in his heart. His name is forever etched into the minds of his readers. He created the false pantheon of gods said to surpass even our mighty Zeus. He is the only human to understand the difference between gods and mortals. The man clicked his pen closed as he looked up at Heimdall. His eyes made the announcer stop dead in the middle of his commentary. While the man's eyes were tired with bags hanging from them, they also held the essence of someone who deals with things outside the norm of mortals. No, outside the norm of even the gods. He, he it is the author of Madness, H.P. Lovecraft. Heimdall was visibly shaken by the way Lovecraft looked at him, but he had a job to do. So he took a deep breath before starting to introduce the representative fighter for the gods. There is only one god that has been both respected and despised by all the others. He was the god who brought wisdom to the humans and taught them to write stories. He helped to decide the placement of the planets and stars in the heavens. The stars in the sky glowed as the light of day was pulled away like a blanket. Between the stars, glowing threads connected them like they were making up parts of a giant cosmic web. He taught mortals and gods alike lessons in morality. And ironically, it was humanity that caused his exile from the world of the gods. But that did not stop this family god. Not when he had all the wisdom that there is at his fingertips. With everyone looking up, no one saw him enter the arena. With a bright smile on his face, he waved happily to his family with one of his six arms. And then he turned to Lovecraft and bowed. Heimdall was shocked and so were the rest of the watchers. A god bowing to a human? It was unheard of, but there it was for all creation to witness. He is 
one of the greatest tricksters around, a sly teacher of morals and lessons. He was crowned the king of wisdom, god of stories. He is the forsaken one of the gods, embraced by humanity. He... <laughs> Loud laughter boomed out, taking the stadium. Lovecraft took a step back with his eyes wide in mild surprise. The laugh came from the man with six arms. He looked up before moving his hand and a thread of web pulled Heimdall's mic from him. Ignoring the desperate shouting of Heimdall, he spoke. The mic he just grabbed seemed pointless as his voice carried to all living creatures to exist or that had ever existed throughout all of space, somehow echoing across the ages, past, present, future. Hi me, my friend. No need to make me sound so high and mighty. I may be the god of wisdom, but I don't need any of this fanfare. <laughs> Laughter erupted from him again, as he always enjoyed making the best out of any situation. He decided to be merciful. With a big smile on his face, and the burning hatred of the gods behind him, he stood casually, ready to fight. Meanwhile, Lovecraft yawned and bowed slightly with his hands behind his back as he mumbled something. Can you repeat that, please? I didn't quite catch it. Ananti's face was puzzled before his eyes widened, catching the scent of something on the wind. Fresh blood. Then pain shot through him, a horrid-looking tendril coming out of the ground at his feet, and it ripped a chunk from his leg. Dark lines of ominous ancient letters, not even he can read, flowed and twisted all the way back to Lovecraft. He carried a dark smile on his face as he moved his hands out from behind his back. One had a deep cut and was bleeding onto his book, while the other held a blood-covered pen. Then, Lovecraft finally spoke. What makes you think a man like you could kill a man like me? Lovecraft's voice was cold and uncaring as he spoke. The entire stadium was silent until Heimdall spoke once more into his horn. Let the sixth round of Ragnarok begin! During this time, Zeus was growing confused. Lovecraft wasn't on the original list. Who allowed these changes without his permission? Excuse me, Zeus. I was the one who made the changes for us. After seeing you almost meet your fate and watching your brother die, I decided we need to make some changes. Zeus wasn't happy with Hermes' words and stood up shakily his body still weak from his fight earlier that day. Mm, I didn't approve of this. What's your plan here, Hermes? <laughs> Hermes only chuckled and pushed Zeus back onto his throne and handed him a stone tablet. You're in no condition to argue, but don't worry. I made sure the ones I chose won't let us down. And even if they do, I have a backup plan. Zeus glared at Hermes with anger, but gave up. As long as they win, he thought. But why would humanity change its fighters? Zeus asked himself as he looked over the roster, missing the puff of smoke that rose from a sharply dressed individual on the opposite side of the arena. 